Good evening, everyone. How's it going? Good. Jeremy, thank Good. you for the quick turnaround on that uh, invoice. Sure, you are welcome. Did, <clears throat> did it already get to you? It did, yep. Thanks, Wonderful. everyone. Hey, Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi, Jeremy. Hey, Michael, how are you? Well, thank you. I did just the same thing, but I managed to finish stuff in my face before <laughs> the meeting. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for getting back to me. Uh, this meeting, so I'm going to check. What, what, was, what was that, that? RD? Okay, maybe he said he was going to reconnect. Hey, Jeremy, <laughs> this is Jerry calling in. Hey, Jerry. Hello? Oh, hi. Melvin, hi. I'm about to start a meeting. No, uh, well, I, I have one minute. All right, I'm, I'm going to mute, mute Michael as a courtesy, just so his uh, phone conversation doesn't bleed back in. And I, <clears throat> somebody r remind me to unmute him at some point because he won't be able to do that on his own. Sorry, Jeremy, I'm back. I made a mistake. Okay. Ah, that's fine. I was just yep. saying uh, thanks for getting back to me about the uh, the logo stuff uh, for the people that did, although Michael's on the phone and he's one of those people. So, <laughs> um, But yeah, I mean, I, I get your point that we probably don't want to register nationally, um, but anyway. <laughs> All right, I only have seven. We need three more for a quorum. Otherwise, we might just have a good old fashioned discussion tonight instead. Here's David. Yeah, there's there's eight. Too bad I don't so, count. Well, you do at the moment because Michael's not in the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> uh, and the answer, Chuck, to, uh, to the question about the extension is, um, actually, a subject of conversation that we'll have later. The way that okay, the great. extension is is going to work is going to be um, uh, is going to be hashed out by joint fiscal and by DPS. So um, we know some things, or at least we think we know some things. But the the bill has not even been signed by the president yet. So yeah, we're all still it's all big fat TBDs. Yeah, it's all hypothetical at this point. <clears throat> So while we're still waiting for, for folks, um, I had completely forgotten that, that Trev Thorpe from Woodbury had stepped down. Um, maybe someone with better memory than me rem also remembers that, but I actually went to remove him from the distribution list and he was already gone. So um, with us, we have um, a Woodbury resident, Gretchen Priest, who is, uh, hi Gretchen, and I think you're sort of representing some of your neighbors too, who are all very interested in getting some improved service. So. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, our area has um, has a need, so this has all come to my attention through trying to figure out our problems. Well, welcome. There's a bigger problem, so I'd like to be part of a you know statewide uh, or local local solution. I'm sitting in. I'll be quiet. Just no, no, it's it, it's all good. We 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 don't actually we can, I can't take any agenda items until we have a quorum because we're a public board like a select board, so we can't do anything without because we have 20 towns. I we, I need 10 of those towns represented before we can get rolling. Um, so yeah, including Woodbury, we have uh, 20 Central Vermont towns and cities, um, mostly in Washington County, but also um, a bit to the north of you in Elmore, and also to the down to the, our southeast in uh, Orange and Williamstown and Washington, I do have a actually. I do have a question. Um, mm -hmm. Skip Lindsay from Woodbury, he was the alternate. So mm -hmm. does that make him the um, the delegate now? He if, doesn't move up to that? 
if if Skip showed up to a meeting, he would have voting rights in the absence of a delegate. But he's he kind of was intending to be a long term backup. I mean, so but I, then again, I haven't heard from him in a, in a while. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, if we appoint a delegate, that delegate would be the primary, and Skip would remain the alternate until I hear something mm -hmm. else from Mr. Gray or the rest of the select board. Well, rather it'd be the town. Okay, yeah, no, no. Yeah, yeah, it'd be the select board appointing, not us. Right, right. The, but there, there's uh, Michael Gray is the select board chair there. So I would hear, I would hear from him what the select board did, and we would be able to move on from there. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Sure. So we're waiting on one more. I think I think I saw Sam show up. Sam's not a delegate. Oh, he's not. Okay. We, Sam, you come to enough of our meetings, we could make you a second alternate if you'd like. Although you're, but you're, but you're a Moortown resident, so you're duplicating. That Chuck, wouldn't help. Right? <laughs> so. Yeah, and and our alternate is Karen Horn, and it's pretty hard to fill those shoes. I suppose that's true. No, no offense to you, Sam, but she she uh, she's a, a a major player in the in the region. <laughs> we could use several duplicates of Chuck, actually. <laughs> yes, that's definitely true. Five, let's see, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I've got eight. Sam, that that is on the agenda. Um, Sam just posted in chat a question around uh, the extension of the CARES, and and um, you actually just missed a conversation that largely we don't know the answer to most of the open questions at this point in time. Uh, we will get to it as an agenda item if this meeting reaches quorum. Um, but uh, otherwise, kind of in a nutshell. Uh, it's going to go have to go to states to decide exactly what to do next. Um, and so we'll be awaiting our state's interpretation of the bill, assuming the bill gets signed and, you know, into law. Uh, we'll be awaiting our state's interpretation of how to proceed with it. All right. So I saw Tom join, I see Henry join, and we are at a quorum. So I'm going to call the December 22nd, 2020 Special Governing Board meeting of CV Fiber to order at 6.06 .06 p.m. Uh, let me start my recording. Okay, and here we go. So I'm unmuting you, Michael. I muted you because um, we were hearing your phone conversation and I wanted to make sure that we weren't hearing your phone conversation. Thank you, thank you for <laughs> muting me. Sorry, I disturbed you. No, that's it's all right. I, I I didn't want to snoop on your private business. Okay. So, uh, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Okay. Seeing no hands raised or any comments out there. Um, moving on to public comment. Is there any public comment about items that are not on the agenda? Okay. Hearing none, moving on to the consent agenda. So I'm going to move that we approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, that was seconded by Chuck. Uh, is there any further discussion? I can add a little note that um, you, you are approving all of these invoices, but I've already sent them. They're, they've already been paid. So um, <laughs> David. <laughs> David, your your reimbursement check and the uh, um, the compass that we got from the the uh, consortium that's in the mail to you today. You should have it. You'll probably have it Thursday. So that was that was allocated for, to you, and I just never I never put it in the mail. That assumes the post office is even working. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty we'll over uh, over taxed right now. Yeah, we shall see. Okay, so any further discussion about the consent agenda? Okay, easy peasy, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Are there opposed abstentions or folks who want a roll call? Hearing none, uh, I see that we have unanimous approval. Thank you for that. Um, that's one of those um, seeking motions retroactively, but the asking for forgiveness rather than whatever. Okay, uh, finance report. So I sent you a, um, I sent you a, a bank statement, our current balance. That does not account for most of the checks that just went out. Um, some of the checks are accounted for in that list. Um, say more than half are not. Um, 
we still have absolutely positively no cash flow problems right now. And as a matter of fact, the state will be cutting us a check for another 70K um, before long. I sent them the invoice for the second half of our grant money yesterday, I think. So whenever that gets here, that I'm gonna put that in the bank and we will talk about what the, what the grant money looks like and what our, uh, how, her, how our hands may or may not be tied in a little bit in the uh, 710 CARES extension options conversation. Um, all right, so moving on, anybody else have any questions about finances or the finance report? Jeremy, I do, this is Jerry. Just and and I I apologize if I'm behind the times on this, but I I, I would ex be expecting a treasurer's report that would reference our CPA. Do we have neither a treasurer nor a con uh, uh, an accounting firm? So that's a that's a really good question. Thank you for asking that. So we we have a treasurer in name who became very busy and uh, was not sure that she was gonna be able to dedicate the time to CV Fiber while she was going through some other stuff. I need to reach back out to her and find out what the, um, what the situation is if her schedule's loosened up a bit. Otherwise, um, Tim Shea, thank you very much, Tim, um, put me in contact with somebody who may be willing to do um, both potentially the treasurer, but also the, the bookkeeping CPA stuff. So the answer is we kind of have a treasurer and we don't have a CPA at the moment. I bring that up because I, I, I don't want to put us at risk at some point if somebody's going to lend us some money, they're going to want to look at something, uh, you know, with, with more information than, than just what you can download off the uh, bank website. Indeed, and, and that's something that we actually have to prepare for the for the Vita loan, a actual like prepared financial statement. That's not something that I'm capable of doing. But I'm, I mean, I'm, um, I'm, I'm writing the checks, I'm mailing them, I'm doing kind of the management while Lee is um, sorting out her stuff. So I see Tom with his hand up and David with his hand up. So Tom. Uh, I think one or two meetings ago, Siobhan brought up something about um, us needing an annual audit, and I was wondering if that has also been figured out as far as when we need to have that done by. No, I, I don't. I, that's not something I've had the had the bandwidth to to tackle. I mean, that that would be something that would be a good thing to do if we get a bookkeeper on board, and if they that could be the first thing that they do is go back and do the audit and then start the bookkeeping. After that, I mean, that would not be something that we would want the person to do on an ongoing basis. You don't want your bookkeeper to be doing your audit also. Um, but it, it may suffice for them to do the audit. I mean, and that's I, I don't know what the CPA rules are for that. If they can do the audit and then come in um, and continue to do the books for us afterwards. Um, we can hopefully figure that out. And then David? Yeah, no, I was two things. One, we, we should probably authorize the purchase of QuickBooks for business or something, so that we actually can put in a chart of accounts and track things by appropriate categories. And I mean, I'll make a motion that we, we authorize that because I think we probably shouldn't be waiting too long on this. And the bookkeepers should be using our software, I believe. But maybe I'm wrong. That would, that would be a good idea. Um, let's see, QuickBooks. I'll, I'll... Okay. Thanks, RD. So um, moved by David, seconded by RD to go get QuickBooks. I'm just looking at the uh, QuickBooks Desktop Premier 2021 for two users is uh, $9.99, a thousand dollars. So I don't, I, I, I don't know what the right package for us is. If there's a number of seats, let's see, small business, um, 1250 a month. QuickBooks Online is probably adequate. Yeah, it, I was it just going to say is. the same thing. QuickBooks Online. QuickBooks um, Online is uh, is uh, forty a month. Jeremy. Yeah. This is this is Alan. Mm -hmm. I thought at one point 
in the first year or maybe first 18 months, we actually bought some software when, oh, who was our first treasurer? I can't remember her name now. This is terrible. Rebecca. 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 Yeah. I, th I thought that we had gone ahead and, and, and actually purchased some, um, some software to do the books. So maybe before we move ahead on authorizing a thousand dollar purchase of QuickBooks, we ought to try to figure that out. Forty dollars a month. Right? Forty a month. Yeah, I'm. I I don't remember. I I, I don't remember that. Um, we can I know call we Becca have... and ask her. That would be good, I think. So so why don't we just, why don't we authorize it? And if we don't need to buy it, then we don't need to buy it. I've I've right. never seen any reports out of it. I've never um, um, seen any logins. And that was not one of the things, kind of the package of things that Rebecca handed off to uh, our second treasurer, who I'm again. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> oh man! The line of treasurers. Yeah. Alexander Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> Jer so, Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, so I, you should uh, probably connect with the book because generally they'll have their own um, QuickBooks, and you can get a. They'll give you like a flash that you can just upload to be able to pull reports. But in general, you'll get the reports. So the only reason you need it is if you want to do some journal querying and such. Um, so, but she'll have they'll have their own QuickBooks that you won't have to buy a license for our on on CB Fiber's behalf. So, um, okay, th that's also another avenue to pursue to see how much you're gonna dig in on the journal entries. Um, so, okay, so so Tim's suggestion here is that we may not need this, Chuck. Um, one one other. Thing to note is uh, for my business, I have the single user license, which is uh, a little bit cheaper. Um, and that license, you can still provide access to your CPA for no additional charge. And they can actually still log in and get all of the information in order to run reports and, and get uh, charts of accounts and, and, and so forth. So, um, you know, I think it's uh, 25 a month for a single user account and goes up to $70 a month for up to up to five users for the online variant. Um, and it does come with some additional bells and whistles for that 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 higher tier package. So, and seeing Alan's comment in the chat, uh, Steve Mnuchin will be looking for a job soon. Maybe we could contact him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I said, not, sure I want, not sure I want him. Hey, no. They're not going anywhere. Another four years. They're not. They're not going. All um, right. So, yeah. Two, Ray. two things. Two things. One is, it sounds like there's enough controversy about you know what to get. Do we already have it? Uh, blah blah blah. That somebody ought to perhaps research it. The other part was, I understand from, uh, I think it's reading the DV DV Fiber website that there's a statute requirement for a finance and audit committee for CUDs. And perhaps we should establish one if we haven't, and then put them in charge of overseeing all of this stuff and making recommendations back to the board. I'm not volunteering for the committee. So uh, we, we, we do did have a finance committee. It's been long languishing, so it, it does exist. Um, I could, we could find out. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't see, is that, RD, was that you? Yes, yeah. that's me. How are we keeping our, how are you keeping records at the moment? Um, it's going into our, our bank account and I have, I'm, I, I know which checks I've written. I know uh, I'm using Excel to keep track of uh, how much, how, how much money we've essentially spent out of each grant um, grant fund because we, we have you know X amount to pay our project manager, X amount for office expenses for communication, whatever. And I have um, I'm maintaining that. That's something I'm going to be submitting to um, DPS shortly. Which is I totally recognize woefully inadequate. But somebody else. <clears throat> what was our bookkeeper? 
was our treasurer or bookkeeper uh, using a, a, an accounting program? We had not gotten that far yet. Not not our most recent treasurer, anyways. It just it just seems elementary for a functioning business to to have its own books and a program to keep them. QuickBooks is fairly simple. so. Well, it for how long? A dozen years. I've been using it, for, and um, it's 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 fairly easy to use. It's fairly inexpensive. Um, I I would expect that after some research, you would go ahead and and make a, a QuickBooks purchase and start using it. Um, it just seems element one of those elementary business things you do from the ground. Sure. So uh, the I, 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 I'm in favor of the motion. Go ahead with it and authorize you to make the purchase based on your um, on your research and your best judgment. I think you have sure. a volunteer for the committee too. Wow, sounds like it. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Well, so so we we have to pin. So what I was about to say is, yeah, we have to pin people down for this because it's 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 good to say we ought to have, you know, accounting software. We ought to have bookkeeping software, but who's going to run it? Because it's been your esteemed chair here that's been also double duty as treasurer. So if somebody is going to pick up that slack and we don't have an active treasurer or a paid bookkeeper, then w w which which of you is going to going to run that? You've got to have a bookkeeper. So, so, if so, get it. Let's, so let's get us one then. A committee can't David. keep the book. I thought Tim had gotten a bookkeeper for us or had found one for us. So we just didn't talk to the person yet. That, that, that was so bookkeeper, person to do the financial review audit or whatever. Yes, I, I still owe the batch elder a. No, I was talking about it. He had a bookkeeper in mind, right, Tim? And I, I got that email from you last week. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I, I have yet to reach out to them as well. But uh, you need yeah. to Jeremy, I'd suggest you delegate that. <laughs> okay. So who, who's going to own reaching out to bookkeepers or financial review folks? All right. This so, is Jerry. Give it to me. Okay. Well, and you've probably already had some interactions with Batch Elder through the uh, have, fire department, I anyways. Indeed. I have indeed, but uh, pass on the information to me because I I don't know that I was privy to that particular email. That, that yeah, that, that was an email just between um, just between Tim and I. Maybe maybe David was on there, but okay, I will um, I will pass it on to you, and we can hopefully make some forward progress. Got it. All right, thank you very much for that. Jerry, uh, anything else on finance? Okay. Okay. So let's continue along. Um, is there still a motion? Is there still a motion oh, on the oh. floor? Yes. That's, that, that's actually true. Th thank you for that. Yeah. So it looks like we could get the the single seat license for QuickBooks for um, but no, no more than three hundred dollars a year. I mean, they do have an incentive right now, but it that is after it is done after three months. So, any further uh, discussion on this? So the motion is now to approve the purchase of QuickBooks, uh, the web application of QuickBooks for forty bucks a month. Uh, well, it's so it's it, it's is not it forty dollars a month, but sure. Whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. Tom? So am, am I understanding correctly from Tim that once we have a bookkeeper, there would be not a need for this motion? And that maybe we should instead move forward with the bookkeeper? Or do you, does the board generally think that, no, we need to get this done faster than that and there's a greater need? Well, um, it's going to depend on how fast we get the bookkeeper. And from what Chuck said, it may be sensible to have us to for us to have our own segregated books that the that the accountant can go and get access to directly and that way we we can go pull our own reports and such i mean this this is information that you know whether our treasurer or one of us extracts it or the bookkeeper extracts it we're, we're going to need it right quick i mean certainly for the loan application and almost certainly for other grants and loans in the future as well 
David? Given our track record, I think we better have our own copy because we're going through treasures and bookkeepers like we um, have a problem. Here, here. I think due diligence requires we do that. Okay. So, so can we uh, friendly amend this to a, a, a not to exceed three hundred dollars a year? At seventy dollars a month. No, it's not seventy. It's only seventy dollars a month if you have multiple users and you want some of the added bells wow. and whistles. I mean, if, I mean, if we want that additional level, that's um, you know, we can certainly do a not to exceed nine hundred. I mean. It's 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 not going to break the bank. Thoughts? Do we need the one? So I I, I put the link in the chat. So if you want to look, the uh, simple start is the one that's twenty five a month, and then the the plus <clears throat> listed as the most popular is seventy dollars a month. Why restrict so, ourselves now? We don't we don't need we don't we don't need to make the the purchase decision now. Let, let's give ourselves the latitude to not have to wait for another board meeting to do this. Okay, so is that is that a suggestion that we go for the uh, not to exceed nine hundred then? For the non-voting member tonight, that's fine by me. Okay, so 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 J Jerry's suggesting that we give ourselves a little more latitude, or give the um, give Jerry, who you know may be um, going to be dealing with this more. You know, the latitude, or maybe the, the bookkeeper is going to want something slightly different. Whatever. Does that seem does that seem reasonable, amenable to everybody? If we can amend that. So, David, is that okay with you? Yes, it's friendly amendment is accepted. Cool. Alrighty. So, um, not hearing any any other commentary. Uh, all in favor of uh, approving. A purchase of QuickBooks for a year not to exceed $900. Please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions or wanting a roll call? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thanks for that. Anything else on finance? Can we go back to, can I speak? Of course. Um, can we go back to what Tom was asking originally? Um, don't we statutorily need to audit once a year? And if so, um, the auditor would not be the bookkeeper, would not be the CPA, would be an independent person. Or is it, or is it that we're required to have a financial <laughs> audit committee that looks over the books that the treasurer has been keeping? I don't know which it is, but whichever it is, we need to establish that and, and follow our statutory requirements. So so this, the statutory re requirements require this audit once. And so this is where legal minds that are smarter than me about this are, would need to figure this out. The audit itself is only required once the district becomes operational. That's the word that they use. What does operational mean? Does that mean once they have you know, funds coming in and going out? Does that mean once they're serving customers? I, I have not dug through statute to understand what that means precisely, but I think we, we probably have triggered it by now um, and we should probably move forward with it. That, that was what I was expecting Batchelder to do, is to do that financial review audit that's going to be satisfactory as a deliverable as part of the Vita loan package. And that's one of the contacts that I'm going to be handing off to Jerry. The bookkeeper, on the other hand, would be the person that we would appoint the treasurer, hopefully, and also give them a stipend very much like we give a stipend to our uh, intrepid clerk to do the work that he does. Does that seem, is that reasonable? Yes. Okay, uh, Tom, I saw you had your hand up and then Chuck. I'm all set. Okay, Chuck. Do you recall how much that stipend is? I want to um, say 200, but I, I can look that up. And our budget changed this year. So we're working with different line items. You'd have to look at the at the new budget, but it's it's in there and it would be, yeah, it was it was something on on par with that. It was a couple hundred dollars a month. 
Uh, it was 250 a month is what we approved in the uh, April 14th minutes. Okay. Um, again, if that's changed, I don't know. I don't know if that would be a board thing that we would need to vote on to change it or. Yeah, we, I expect would. we would. Um, especially, and if we're going to hire someone who is a paid bookkeeper and they have a rate that doesn't allow them to um, be so kind to us, even as a, as a um, public organization, you know, if they have a rate, people should get paid their rate. Uh, if they want to volunteer or semi volunteer their time, that's, that's fine too. Um, but we may have to revisit that depending on um, what folks are going to be expecting. All right. Uh, is that, are you, uh, you good Chuck? Yes, thank you. Okay. Anybody else on finance? Yeah, Tom. Does that require any sort of motion for us to go, you know, hire an auditor and complete an audit or? So there we're, we're not, out of there, there, there will be soon. I mean, once we've identified who's, who's going to do this and, if, and if we're going to expend any funds then, but, but I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know what that cost is going to be. I don't know who that's going to be. So for appointing somebody, yeah, we're, we'll have it at our at our next meeting. Makes sense. And, and and perhaps sooner for just a quick, you know, hop in, make the motion, hop out. Okay. Anything else on finance? Okay. Moving along, uh, communications committee report. Chuck, any updates for us? Yeah. Um, so since we last met, uh, the website initiative was kicked off with Code Writer, um, and I'm happy to report great progress has been made. We've got an, an overall structure and some of the uh, look, look and feel elements already nailed out, and we are well on track to launching a very simple redesign uh, by by next week. But there will be ongoing improvements that go. Uh, thereafter uh, as we increase the amount of content. The next steps are uh, I'm going to be sending an email to the communications committee to divide and conquer a few pages where we want to rewrite some of the content. Um, and I'll be asking kind of some subgroups uh, that would not trigger um, quorum uh, to, to take those on so that they can kind of discuss those on an ongoing basis and, and, and so forth. I would encourage anybody who wants to be involved that is not officially on the communications committee to uh, reach out to me uh, if you want to volunteer. I'd be happy to include you in that list and 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 get you on there, Tim. I saw Tim Sullivan raised his hand. Great, Tim. I'll uh, I'll add you on that list. Um, anybody else who wants to go ahead and uh, hit me up in the chat, uh, and I'll make sure you're you're on that kind of divide and conquer initiative. All right, thanks, Chuck. Any questions for Chuck before we let, let him off the hook? I got I got one for Chuck. Sure. Um, with the uh, proposed changes or the changes that you've probably seen that we can't see, usually when I build websites and modify, I usually make a new folder for the for the new site, and that's easy enough to do. That way, you could like put a folder that's considered semi-private where you could send us or other people to it to review and it doesn't affect the existing running system. Tim, we have a staging server set up. Uh, the staging server is okay. not actually password protected, but you know, uh, 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 security by obscurity, if you are familiar with it, with the term. <laughs> um, so I'd be happy to share the link uh, with folks. I would just ask not to get inundated with a ton of change at this point in time, because we have a very tight deadline. But if people do want to see it, I'd be happy to share the, the current state of that site uh, at any point in time. Just reach out to me. Yep. Thank you. OK, anything else for Chuck? Okay, Business Development Committee, David. So the Business Development Committee met last week and covered a few territories, including um, uh, project manager, what to do next. And um, we've got a subcommittee of Ray and Shiban who are working on that and we're looking for other ideas of what we should do. And I'll let and Tim, Tim prepared a summary of what he thought we needed um, in writing, 
And so we have that to work from. We also had a discussion about whether we ought to reach out to the Regional Planning Commission to see whether they might have a role in, in, in managing our operations and staff and having a place to staff our operations or hiring a person through them. It would be our their employee, but our, our person. Um, so I, in <clears throat> regarding that, I did send a, an email to the uh, director uh, yesterday afternoon and haven't heard back from her uh, soliciting interest in that and having a dialogue with her about that potential. That came up because in the Vicuda, Vicuda meetings, <clears throat> Uh, Sorry, uh, who was her at? Bonnie, who was it you're speaking with at the regional Bonnie planning commission? Okay. It's Bonnie Wanaga. Sorry okay. about that. Yep. Yep. And Just to make this, sure. yeah, this came out of going to a number of Vicuda meetings in which um, three or four of the uh, CUDs are actually being staffed by regional planning commissions, and they seem to be doing the grant management and. Etc. And maybe they are all startup kind of organizations, but it seems to me they they have somebody to take care of details that we're having sometimes trouble taking care of. So it was worth doing the outreach. So that's underway. Ray and Siobhan are, are working on the, the project, uh, the description, and and how we're going to get it out. <clears throat> and then um, let's see what else. Is, and then so then the other part of the business, the business committee, is we've been working on trying to meet our January um, deadlines for putting out RFPs. So we've got three RFPs that have been drafted. One of them has gone through review and revision on poll inventory and make ready work. The second RFP on um, design engineering construction is drafted and being circulated for review. Comments were due today. Um, and then the third one is on um, operations ISP work and that one's been drafted but and, and sent out, but uh, I think the due date is later this week. Um, so we're hoping, the committee is hoping to have some recommendations for the board in mid-January or so, so that we can better understand what RDOF means to the, to the district, what any other activities that might impact what we've been doing, whether it's COVID related or not. Um, so we've been moving, you know, the concept that Ray has, Ray and I have been working on is putting out these RFPs as in the first one, especially as an indefinite quantity contract in which we would get qualified vendors who would be available to us for a number of years. And we would put out many bids to get their actual cost proposal to do the work on any of the uh, inventory, as well as helping us with getting the utility to do all the make ready work. <clears throat> So that's the first one. The second one we're still, you know, discussing and working on, but I think we're making we're making some progress. Um, and uh, I am trying to think of there's one other thing that we discussed at last week's meeting. And at that time, at that time, we didn't know whether the extension was going to happen on the COVID money. So, you know, what we talk about tonight will be uh, more of that in terms of feeding what the business committee needs to think about and do. Tim, was there anything else we covered that you were there for? No, nope, I think that touches on, yeah, big yeah. things, the RFPs and, and the PM. And um, I can take questions on that. The, uh, the other thing, I mean, and Tim may be covering this, the canvassing work. Um, are you going to cover that, Tim? Uh, I can, or yeah, we can talk yeah, about it now. There's otherwise. a couple of things on canvassing. I'd rather have you lead on that. <clears throat> okay. Any, any questions for David or folks from business development? Okay, thanks for that, David. So, um, segueing nicely to uh, to Tim, project manager's report. Yep. So uh, things obviously be uh, winding down for me, but uh, let's see. I'll go uh, in no particular order. Um, we did get kind of the handoff from uh, Coos Systems, so I did set up uh, David and Chuck as admin to. Um, start to look at that going forward and uh, understand how we can use that software. Um, we obviously are well underway with the canvassing. Uh, David sent out the metrics. Uh, they've made over 2000 phone calls and have been ramping up with a few more callers um, 
to hit the phones and, and following up with people. Uh, upwards of nearing 300 surveys having been completed. Uh, they will be doing uh, starting literature drops uh, this week. Um, the intent is for them. Um, I had given them email addresses, thinking that the the email addresses everyone's was the Gmail. Um, however, that was not the case. So Chuck is helping with that. So they'll reach out prior to them coming uh, to your neighborhoods uh, to let you know that they'll be doing literature drops. So if you're interested in participating or, or just communicating that they will be out and about. The intent is not to knock on the doors, but just to uh, leave the, the uh, door hanger and the trifold. And they'll also uh, be starting a text campaign and they're optimistic that they can uh, get to get to the uh, 4,000 plus residences by the by the end of the month. Um, uh, let's see, website, Chuck's given the update there. He's definitely taken the, the lead. Um, lead application, I did hand off the uh, some draft language for that. Um, David gave an update on the RFPs. And then I did create some uh, some uh, a checklist just for considerations when uh, creating and some and some language uh, for RFPs and contracts. So I think those are items I've got. Right. Thanks, Tim. Any questions for Tim? Okay. Um, yeah, Ray. Yeah. So does anyone feel any a, a little bit squeamish about uh, them doing? texting to folks in your in your districts and your towns is that okay you think people going to be annoyed after the last election cycle i mean it's <laughs> i'm good with it okay does, does anybody else have any any reluctance about texting in particular jeremy no, uh, I had something else. Okay, so let's let's have uh, David and then Jeremy. If nobody else has any thoughts about uh, texting, so they have. Cut, I forget what the number Tim said for so the number of people that have filled out the survey based on what they've done, but we've got uh, over six hundred people filled out the survey. So some people who posted the survey link on their front porch forum, people are filling it in. I've sent out a summary, I believe, to everybody, or uh, I forget who yeah. I sent out the summary to. Um, but this this literature drop is another opportunity to let people know that this is coming. And so if you could put something in your front porch forum, a little update, and link the survey again, I mean, there's no, no harm in having other people fill in the survey besides the, the 4,200 people have been trying to target. Um, so that I really strongly suggest sort of a, a front, porch, front porch forum notice. Agreed, Jeremy? So I got some pushback from people in my town, from people in Plainfield about this, about going up to people's houses in general. And I don't know how they would feel about literature drops. So what I'm wondering is if I put out in front porch forum saying, hey, we're going to do literature drops. They're not going to knock on people's door. They're not going to interact with people. They're just going to hang out the door knockers and leave the literature. If you don't want that to happen, then please email me and I will pass your address along. Do you think that that is reasonable? I think so. I mean, if okay. you know, if those folks, if those folks understand yeah. our, our canvassers get that information and they just scrub those from their list, I mean, that's that's easy peasy. Okay, but, but, but um, I, I mean. My, my instinct is that there's only going to be two or three people that are really upset about this and that no, nobody's going to care that somebody sets something on their on their doorknob. I mean, if you get a fuel delivery, I got a fuel delivery yesterday and somebody had to walk up and stick the stick the tag, stick the bill in my door. No, I, so. I, I get that. Uh, you know, it's um, it was something that popped into my head um, that people are maybe a little bit extra touchy about people showing up at their houses. Um, and wanted sure. to throw that out there. The other thing is, are they going, if, if they have a survey response 
from a house, are they then not going to drop the literature there? Is that already scrubbed from their lists? It should yeah. be. Am yes. I yes. Yep. Nick and Connor have confirmed they so they will not go to those that they have contacted via phone. And uh, and if you and Ray, you posted something in chat too, but why don't why don't you vocalize it? Yeah. So um, after the first front porch forum notice went out, um, it generated some feedback and. Somebody drafted this particular response for that as a follow up, and it seems to answer what we're trying to do this 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 time here. And so you might want to modify this and put it out in front porch forum like tonight, tomorrow. Um, and perhaps people who don't want to get, you know, their door door knocked on or whatever, um, as somebody indicated that uh, they're, they're not supposed to then uh, go to the house. So. No harm, I don't think. Right. I mean, and and there will. I mean, to to be fair, there will be there may be times where somebody has filled out the survey and for whatever reason their address isn't quite up to date, or or and they complain like, well, I filled it out, but they still came to my house. And there, I think there will be there may be a little bit of that, but yeah, hopefully, if you can send something like this out, <clears throat> yeah, and, and Jeremy, if you want to modify it, so they say if you. If you say, if you, if you just don't want to be bothered with any of this, just send me an email and then poof, they go away. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, I, I just want to be kind of cognizant of not wanting to irritate people and give them the option to opt out. And then what goes along with that is that we need to stick to that. So, you know, if we get responses, you know, the canvassers need to be pretty clear that they're not going to show up at those addresses. So, anyway, and the, I, I would, I would bet that the, the Coos software has uh, some of that CRM ability where you can essentially, you know, check the box, and it's like a, don't, don't bother them, don't disturb. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other questions for Tim, or about canvassing? Okay. Moving along, grant funding update and CARES extension options. So I alluded before to um, I invoiced the state for the second part of our uh, of our funding, which is uh, basically entirely for the canvassing and the website, communi the communications and outreach portion <coughs> that we're doing through the end of the year. Um, so we should see that that uh, that check soonish. Um, the bigger deal, though, is that the the bill that has not yet been signed by the president, <laughs> but we expect to be, um, extended our deadline, extended the CARES Act fund deadline. Um, so I had a chance to talk to Rob Fish this morning and have a little bit of insight into um, how this might work. And one of the one of the main reasons I called this meeting tonight was for this agenda item. So I'm kind of looking for um, looking for some input marching orders, really kind of marching orders to then kind of kick over to business development because um, some of what we're going to talk about will have to do with the projects that we're, you know, that we're thinking about that were underway. Um, first of all, um, now that the um, RDOF blocks are allocated and there's funding going to them imminently, um, this, the CARES Act funds and actually probably any state funds from here on out will not be eligible if they're in an RDOF block. I don't think that's so surprising. They, they don't want organizations to double dip if they're already getting federal funds. I don't think that affects us too, too much. Um, we have to wait for the state. So this will be joint fiscal and this will be DPS themselves. Um, at different levels, figuring out how the extension will actually work. It may not be an automatic extension where they we can they can just take previously allocated funds and then essentially press a one year snooze button, and then we take it from there. Um, uh, DPS is hoping they're hoping that that's the case. They would very much like to see approval coming from the legislature saying just extend it, go from there. Um, if that's the case, and that's 
kind of the way that I think the wind's blowing, at least from what, what Rob is saying. Any project that has already been approved um, that we're kind of sitting on could technically still go, provided that it's not modified. If a project needs to be modified, probably not going to be able to go and just ask them like, oh, can we tweak this? From what Rob said, it's going to be close down the old grant and start a new one and, re and reapply with new numbers, new addresses, you know, who you're serving or whatever. Um, and keeping in mind that, and I'm trying to remember the turn of phrase that he used, but um, these funds should be for projects that are not budgeted. So if, you know, we are already allocating funds or already planning on building something, this isn't something to sweeten the pot. So this would be for unbudgeted ex expenses. So um, we, we'll have to be clear about what portions of projects are be are coming from which you know, which allocation, and that could be that could be pretty awkward, and that is going to be um, kind of th threading a needle in terms of financing. Um, one of the things that Rob said is that it's he that. I don't know that this is official, but I, th I think he got the sense that it was not um, not terribly likely that they were going to fund um, fixed wireless, additional fixed wireless projects, that they'd be funding fiber projects. So going back and you know relooking at our fixed wireless project that we had looked, you know, that we had talked about back in you know August, September, October. Um, as I understand it, those those are probably I don't want to say definitively; those are probably not going to go. Um, so we technically still have two, um, two funding requests that have been approved that are still kind of sitting in limbo. And one of them's in Moortown, the other's in Northfield Roxbury. Um, if we can make one or both of those, um, if we can piggyback one or both of those onto a larger project, like the project that we're thinking about with um, using the Vita money, if we can partner these, then we could conceivably make a better a better overall project and a less expensive overall project. The, the, the thing is though, keep in mind that any of these, any of these residences that we say that we, we're gonna serve have to be first. They have to be served by December, 2021. So if things go long in terms of poll audits, we're, we're screwed um, or, we, or, or we would have to eat the cost in, in any case. Um, so there's some complexity, we'll say. There's some complexity in deciding how to proceed from here. Um, so it, it's, it seems to me like we could probably work with ValleyNet and get the Roxbury Northfield project rolling. Um, they seem willing to continue with that. Um, and then the Moortown project, I think we would have to go back and, and look at the maps and see, because we don't necessarily have 100% buy-in from Waitsfield Champlain Valley, I think we need to, um, I know D David, you were, you were thinking about talking to them again and to get a better sense of what their what their timeline, what their costs are, and to verify that our the grant, the thing that we applied for, and the funds that we applied for actually are grounded in reality. Because if they're not grounded in reality, you know, it's again, it's us that gets to pick up the slack there. <laughs> so um, again, if we can, as much as possible, talk obliquely about our kind of strategic vision for. Um, build outs and such. Um, I'd love to hear what you have to say and how you think we should proceed from here. So I see Chuck first. First a question and then a plug. Um, the question is uh, what, do, uh, I, I forget, and this has probably been talked about a bunch, but does RDOF regions have a comp, do RDOF regions have a comparable deadline uh, my understanding it was it was a longer deadline. Is that right? Yeah. So um, 
Michael, you had a question too. So if you want to answer years, that, um, and then. Sure. Um, you want to do your plug first, Chuck, or want the answer yeah, my, first? My plug is let, let's go build that more time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shocked to hear that. Um, so, so you know, I have a comment, but I'll answer the RDOF question. The RDOF, um, RDOF funding won't probably occur until late in the year. Um, the deadlines for build out are 40% um, in the first three years, 60 in the second, in the third year, in the fourth year, excuse me, 80% in the fifth year and 100% in the sixth year. So it's a slow process in terms of obligation. Um, and these may build more quickly, of course, but those are the deadlines. Um, so I want to speak to the Moortown one, um, and then and then I have questions for Jeremy in his conversation with Rob. As I understand it, the Moortown project, as revealed by Weston when he did the the um, survey of the polls, was that he discovered there were a lot of non-polls, that quite a bit of it was underground that the cost would be prohibitive most likely that um, the burden would fall on us because the grant wouldn't cover all of that and that WEC was not enthused about doing it and so we have all these intrinsic problems with the more town so that brings me to the questions i have for jeremy and, and his conversation with rob when rob said if you're going to change your projects, you're probably going to have to turn the funds in and we're going to and reapply and start over. I'm wondering if there is some flexibility. If you're if we're not throwing out more town, if we're just modifying more town a little bit, maybe that would still fly. But you know, if, if we're not saying, oh, we want to go to Cabot instead or, oh, we want to do fixed wireless instead. I can see why they'd say that won't fly. You've got to reapply. But if, but if you just want to modify the Moortown project to make it viable, um, maybe that's possible. So did you get anywhere with on that with Rob? Um, my, yeah, yes, um, we, we did talk about that a bit. Um, maybe not kind of framed in that exact way. Um, and my impression and again, this is my impression of his impression. So there's a lot of impression, impressionistic <laughs> um, attitudes going on right now. Um, so, and the answer was, if it if it's different, you'll probably have to reapply. I mean, so so the good news is we already have the first application, but if things change, we have to go at this kind of de novo. Um, and if the finances are different, if the players are different. If the addresses are different, that's different enough that my that my read and um, Rob's read was that we're we're gonna it's a new application. So I mean, I I I I don't know that it's that much extra work. Like I said, especially since we're gonna go back, we're gonna take the word document, we're gonna change some things here, change some things there, we're gonna increase the cost almost certainly, and resubmit it. Um, so something else I didn't mention is that it appears for these funds that really it's only us competing with us to to get at these funds. Seriously, because Northeast Kingdom is already exhausted. They've already maxed out their cap. Um, EC Fiber also has, as I understand it. So there's no other CUD right now ready to pull the trigger and be guaranteeing building fiber by the end of the year. So... Um, I'm, you know, he wasn't saying like, oh, it's yours if you want it. It's it's not that simple. I mean, we still have to we still have to show that it's a that these are sane projects and such. Um, yeah. So so Michael, and then I have Jerry and David. So uh, I'll just it's just a quick follow on. So so I'm in favor of withdrawing that application and rewriting it. I think that we are likely to be successful, and we can write one that that's appropriate to our needs. Okay, Jerry. Thanks, Jeremy. You know, I'm forever the optimist, uh, <laughs> but I, I, I do want to throw some caution here. We 
are doing about 65% or less of what we ought to be doing on a regular basis. I, I really think that our efforts from the small group that makes an effort, our efforts should really be focused on the primary goal. And, you know, we're losing Tim. We have to fill that gap. We have, we have three uh, RFPs out there that aren't ready to hit the street. We've got a lot going on, and there, there's a lot flapping in the wind. And I'm, 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 I'm feeling that the, uh, you know, the, the vessel we're navigating here isn't responding to the tiller. And I'm, I'm a little, little concerned about, you know, jumping at these opportunities. There are so many things that are going to come across that we have as options. But I'm thinking that we're not, we, we really need to focus. Let me, I'll put it at that, and I'll stop. So, 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 Jerry, just for, from your point of view, um, if I'm hearing you right, you're you'd be reluctant to go after the CARES Act funding, and would prefer that we stick with going after the match funds and the Vita loan, and just go at the straight pilot project, without being encumbered by these other kind of deadlines and funding sources. Did I hear that right? That, that yeah, that's 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 what I'm pushing forward. I, I you know I could be mistaken. Others could think that this is this is such an easy sidebar we should pick it up, but I, I still see it as a sidebar. Okay. Thanks for that. So yeah, I'd love to hear more if uh, if folks agree with Jerry or or not. So I've uh, David, then Jeremy, then Chuck. Okay. So my pitch is actually a little bit also that. there as well. The uh, the whole idea of um, reapplying and making it part of our phase one project is probably doable. The other thing I want to know, Jeremy, did he talk about the the other state money that's available January 1st for CUDs to match VITA money? Because we could start um, running, we could start moving pretty fast. Yeah, so so we didn't spend much time talking about that. I mean, I, I mentioned it as we were talking, kind of adding up um, and sort of describing all of the different funding sources so so we've got you know the vita match the vita money that there's connectivity initiative money in there there's cares act money in there and then that's just where that's the state stuff right um so yes i mean that that will be there um but again i mean so i think jerry's concern is you know can we get those folks at those addresses turned on in time um, so I have then, unless you had anything else, David, I have uh, Chuck, then Ray. Yeah, um, I guess to respond to Jerry's comment, you know, it, it would be nice for our overall cash flow picture to have some of this money come with strings instead of an obligation to pay it back. Um, and, you know, so th th that is one benefit to consider. Good point, Chuck Ray. So, uh, question: How much money are we talking about for for what for the, the CARES Act stuff? Yeah, we a couple we were hundred, approved. Couple hundred thousand. We were approved for two hundred fifty thousand. Uh, so we're not we're not talking about a lot of money. No. Okay. So, um, I mean, it's not a lot of money, and and frankly, you know, there's there's uh, opportunistic money, which is what this is. And then there's the then there's the veto loan, um, and we should go as a you should go for every dollar we can get, and all of this stuff is going to run in parallel. All the paperwork's going to run in parallel. The work's going to run in parallel, and at some point in time, we're going to actually have people working for us to do these things. And I'm with Michael with regard to write it, uh, write it the way we need to write it, um, and it's going to take us two months to get to a point three months to get to a point where we're actually doing something about it. But let's get the paperwork in, let's get approval, and let's get the funds. So, yeah, so $250,000 isn't, you know, isn't that much, but I mean, in terms of our first, our pilot project, that's, you know, five and a half percent. And if, if somebody walks up to you and says, I'm going to pay for five and a half percent of your project, I mean, I think that's, it's, it's, it's not nothing. Um, Michael. I disagree with everyone who thinks it's a small amount of money. I think the quarter million dollars does matter. We should take it seriously, especially since it's not a loan. 
Um, I forgot my main point though. Uh, Oh, I know what it is. And basically, the problem with CARES Act money was the way it was implemented last year, this past year of 2020. Um, it was made available back in April. It was passed into state legislation in July. Grant applications weren't due until August. Money wasn't awarded until October. And then supplies were hard to gather and contractors were hard to gather and there were problems and suddenly it was this mad dash. This time we had 12 months. And so I don't see why it should be a distraction from the other work we're doing. It can go parallel like Ray was saying. And therefore, there's no reason to turn it away. It's a valuable thing for CB Fiber and it's it's going to advance, advance our constituents. So we should go for it and I, I don't and if if david's right that it can be tacked on to the vita project that's a good that's one good possibility it could go somewhere else that might help future projects so i'm just in favor of continuing with it okay any any folks who I haven't heard from yet any want to weigh in on this so like tom or alan john henry uh, R.D. Jeremy? Um, one thought that I had was if there are problems with working with Waitsfield Champlain Valley, because that sounded like that might have some issues, I wonder about expanding what we do with uh, ValleyNet, because that, that seems like a much easier kind of thing to get going. We say, hey, build this for us, and here's the money. You know, and, and I wonder about seeing what they could do in an area that's maybe contiguous with them or or somewhere else if that's worth looking at well and i, I think david probably has more to say on this but i mean this is something that the that business development is looking at and putting out the rfps for um i think yeah th 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 those are more for the for the big project but i think i mean if this is going to be anywhere near the big project then i i think that's probably information that we can we can gather as part of that process. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it, it sounds like we need to keep these very separate. So having two separate projects would be easier rather than tacking this onto an existing project. Um, and I wonder if maybe we could use some of this a little bit strategically um, to cover air. Well, no, the because we can't use it for areas that were one in RDOF. So never mind, that goes out the window. I was just thinking about think thinking trying to think sort of strategically where we might have problems caused by art off, but I don't think that'll work. So never mind that. All right. So uh, Tom, then Ray, then Michael. Yeah. Um, having said in one of the business committee meetings, um, you know, David's comment of, you know, if, if funding is going to be coming down the road, new administration, there's talks of a, another round of stimulus being heavily considered coming in March, maybe. Um, that it would be awfully nice if we had a quote unquote shovel ready project ready to go um, that we could just have you know a ready application and, and be a top you know winner for that kind of funds. Um, I, I get what Jeremy's saying with with um, you know maybe going with Valley Net being able to sp spread a little farther than what they had before, but the fact that we already have a project. It's an interesting sound. Um, given that we already have a project that has already you know been awarded. Um, and maybe going back with that same project with slight modifications and if necessary, but it just feels like that's a, a stronger route to us getting something on the ground going and then us, us being able to say, look, we have another continuation past that, ready to go, already scoped. Um, it just feels like a stronger route to me to be able to then be in a, mm -hmm. a great place for when other shoes start to drop. So, so are you saying, Tom, for the, the Roxbury project that's already ready to go? I'm not saying for the Moortown project. I think the Roxbury project, as is, um, sounds like a good one to go with. And I, I'd say with the Moortown project as well, um, continuing along the path we've already looked at for that. That small quarter of a million, but that small quarter of a million will cover, you know, a quarter of a town. So um, that gets us somewhere. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure does. All right, uh, Ray, then Michael. 
Uh, two things. Uh, Mike Rob Fish join us at a future meeting. If I if we invite him, he'll he'll show up. Let's, I think we should do that, or at least maybe to a business <laughs> development meeting, David. Um, so it seems to me that every time we've talked about this in the past, we've been talking about, and maybe this is a different funding or something, but we've been talking about underserved, unserved, underserved, you know, uh, teachers and students and telehealth and all this stuff. It, it, are those conditions still applicable here? And if they are, are, are we trying to do something different from that? It seems like when we were trying to approach that before, and I heard what you said about fixed wireless, not, notwithstanding, um, that the way we were trying to address that was with fixed wireless. So we were going to put up 10 towers or pick a number. And then it, it finally get down to like four towers and one tower. I don't know what hap happened to the whole thing. But um, do the same restrictions apply? And if they do, how can we just tack this on to an existing, um, you know, phase one, for example? So... Uh, yeah, David, if you want to answer that. Yeah. So the these the two projects we're talking about right now, the fixed wireless projects, are CUD projects. They're not connectivity initiative projects, which had all the restrictions on verifying speeds and all that. This is purely money for CV fiber to build a fixed wireless project. I, I mean, a, a fiber project, two fiber projects. So there were different rules. I think they're different rules. Um, the other thing I think you're getting at is that time has moved on. I mean, we are ready to move forward with our builds. So we ought to be thinking strategically about how do we wind a revision to this, these two projects we got awarded into making our, our, our future work. Um, if not, our least, you know, doing the least, least problematic solution. But we do need to move forward. And I'm think that reason I asked the question about the money, and I think having more discussions with Rob about the uh, the potential for $400,000, we could start using that money to do the pole inventories and all the things we need to do to have a shovel ready project. And that's what my main goal is, is getting our phase one project going. These other projects can go on while we're doing that. Um, these projects are gonna require the similar kind of work, but the way we were talking about doing it is we weren't gonna do that work. The, uh, you know, ValleyNet or, or Waitrose Telecom, we're gonna do the heavy lifting. And we're not sure yet, you know, whether Wayfield Champlain is even potentially interested in doing it anymore. We do know that WEC, WEC is definitely interested in working with us to make fiber happen. And, you know, to the extent that they could give us a price on what it would take to do the fiber in this Moortown project, I mean, it's not going to be cheap, but maybe we should find out. Instead of doing the 55 houses, we do 25 houses. I don't know, you know, it's one of those things that we need to do some more background on. And clearly all those residences, we had enough priority addresses in both sites that they became eligible projects to meet the COVID requirements. So that's what, and Ray, in terms of the question, some of the, for the whole board, the priority for the COVID money was to serve priority addresses. So there were students at home or healthcare, telehealth needs that had been identified. Um, the Moortown project had a lot more pluses than the Roxbury one because they had a lot more priority people. They either filled in the survey that the department created and Roxbury didn't know about it. But when I looked at the data, um, the, the data in Moortown is pretty bleak um, and Chuck knows that. Um, but in any event, that's why we went there. Um, so who knows? I think we need to look forward to revamping the proposal, we'll talk to Rob and say, listen, we're gonna resubmit. Uh, that's my recommendation. So that we get what we want as opposed to being, you know, four months later. I mean, this is the problem. I mean, time has really moved on and, um, you know, things are changing, so. All right, thanks for that, David. Um, Michael? Uh, two points. Um, one, um, it was already mentioned um, that the timing of this project and the timing of our phase one are different. This one has a deadline at the end of the year. And if we take into account, and we don't know what the legislature is going to actually authorize, but even if they give us the full year that the feds are giving us, we have to remember that this is about the pandemic. It's about getting people able to do 
schooling online and so forth. It's not something that we want to stretch out a long time. We want to do it rapidly. Um, so tying, this is an argument against tying it with the phase one project because that might slow down the CARES Act project. And we want to be able to get that one completed with haste. Um, because we've done a lot of background work towards all of these projects, even the fixed wireless one, um, they all have, it's going to be a lot easier to get them accomplished. Um, so that brings me to fixed wireless. I don't know if the department has made policy that there will not be fixed wireless, but keep in mind that fixed wireless still is the most rapid way to get service out in a large area. And especially since we now have done a lot of legwork, that might be a possible thing for seed fiber. And the, the other point I want to make, and David, did you want to comment or? Well, the, in the context of fixed wireless, the state hired a consultant to do a, an emergency COVID broadband plan. I don't know what the, it was really called, but in one of the comments that not only I made to them, there was no discussion in the short-term need, which is what that plan was supposed to talk about, was a one mention of fixed wireless. When in fact, you and I know, know that fixed wireless can be put up in like four months. Um, and it was, I don't know, the final plan has not come out yet. So I hope they address the question in the final plan, but that's a, it'll be a good, it'll be a point where the public service department either you know, shuts up or puts up on fixed wireless because I wasn't the only one who, who complained that the plan didn't discuss it. So we'll see how, I mean, I think that'll probably be the telling thing about whether they'd, they'd consider either, they still have $3 million in connectivity money to give out. Um, so if they're not gonna do fixed wireless, I'm not sure we wanna get into the, the, the fixed wireless game again, but it was, and it was interesting to see what, you know, I mean, the town of Calais town office has 4-1 um, broadband speed. They can't operate that way. So that's why I get caught back up in fixed wireless because that was a, could be a quick and cheap, cheap solution for the, the town of Calais. So, you know, these things that Rob and the department are gonna have to sort out, um, in my opinion. Can, can I uh, make my second point? Yes, um, I'm sorry. On, on RDOF. Um, if you talk to EC Fiber ValleyNet about what they won in RDOF, which generally was 10% of what the Fed said it would take to build a project, they certainly wouldn't consider that any grant in an RDOF funded area was double dipping. Those are very small subsidies. They're subsidies that enable someone to take a project on, but they're not grants like the kinds we're talking about now. They're not big funding. And I'm intentionally using another outfit besides mine to make the point. Um, it applies to anyone who's won RDOF unless they won at a very high level, which almost no one did. So um, I don't know if the department has actually decided policy on that either. Every single town in the state, where they, well, no, every single town in CP fiber territory, at least, had RDOF territory within it. And if we are going to not be able to fund all the areas that one RDOF support, we're extremely limited. So I suspect that that policy is going to have to be fleshed out a little more and addressed. I, I, I think I think Rob was talking about for the CARES Act funding. I thought that I thought that was what he was talking about. It might be worthwhile just to reach out to him and 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 find out or advocate, you know, if there is, you know, if there is a reason to go. Uh, to to have this to allow the state or to have the state allow its you know grantees to be to have a bit more flexibility there it would be i mean this was a very small portion of the the conversation that we had today so i'd say it would be worthwhile to reach out so i have uh, ray then tom so timeline and i michael I'd like you to do a check on me and and david as well <laughs> timeline i'm expecting that we will do we will begin 
poll inventories in March, that design work could begin um, May, that make ready could begin in um, June, July, that construction, that engineering construction could begin in September. Now, I don't know how far off that is. You might, you know, put some reality onto that, Michael and David. But if you were looking at these other things, how do they fit in? If it's going to be fiber to the premises, it still has to do the pole inventory and the design work and the make ready. And if we're starting, if that's the sequence of events, then all of that is dependent upon, that's the critical path. Um, if, it's, if we're talking about fixed wireless, no pole inventory is required, right? And, and I think you've already identified in your first application, 10 poles, someplace. And we can apply money to that. I mean, we, we, what do we know? What we know is that our district is going to require fixed wireless if we're going to serve everybody, period. And some people are going to be on that forever. Some people will have that replaced by fiber to the premises, but that's probably going to be three, four, five years away. So <clears throat> fixed wireless is quicker. If we can get the money for it, it, we should we should be doing that. And that's a whole separate thing from this timeline I just laid out, which might be off by four weeks in any direction, perhaps, maybe more. So some reality from Michael and David, but that's what it looks like to me at this point. I'll do one sentence. I think you were too pessimistic. I think the fiber can be done quicker than that. And even though I love fixed wireless, I could argue that a CARES Act fixed wire uh, fiber project shouldn't delay the other one. Um, they could be done in parallel. They could be designed in parallel. The pole inventories could be done in parallel. And I think it will be faster than you described. I hope so. But uh, fixed wireless is not dependent upon any of the other stuff, right? right? Sure. We can do design engineering on fixed wireless um, yep. in in March if we if we wanted to do the the RFP for it, right? Sure. Okay. Then perhaps we should do that. But if we decide, Rob, go ahead. But, but but Rob said it's not likely that the CARES Act funds will be will will be allowed to be used on fixed wireless projects. So I mean, we, we we can apply for it, but from what what he's telling me, they're 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 funding fiber. So, just to clarify, the our fixed wireless proposal was made pretty much to the connectivity initiative money, which is separate from the CUD money okay. we're talking yeah. about for fiber to the premise. So to, if the, to, if they to allow to fixed wireless in the connectivity round that they're probably going to put out again. Which we'll have to go through all it all over again, which is you know reviewing Consolidated's proposal, reviewing Comcast proposal. I hope they tighten up the rules this time. I mean, it was crazy. But anyway, I'll, that's enough. I'll shut up. <laughs> Thanks, David. That that's that's a good point. I was I was just fixated on the CARES Act funds, but you're right. That's a different that's a different bucket of money. Uh, Tom, uh, I think it was just a quick tangential question for Michael. Um, what are the consequences for an RDOF winner not serving their chosen or their awarded block? Um, the census block groups no longer exist as far as RDOF is concerned. They were just an artifice, a tool in order to get bids. So now, state by state, winners have a total number of locations within census block group low geography that they're obligated to serve and they have to serve certain, they have to serve uh, at least 95% of those locations or in answer to your question, pay enormous fines, sometimes a million dollar fines, big fines. Um, there are ways to appeal to the FCC to waive certain commitments. It's not easy. Sometimes you can get up cheap. Um, I don't know if anyone will be doing that, but so you should assume that at least 95% of the locations that were won by all the entities will be served in six years. Thanks. Uh, 
Okay. So it sounds like we still have uh, like we're not 100% sure how to proceed. So I'm, I'm not sure that we made forward progress. So, so maybe let me take a portion of this then and we'll try this out. Should we, st should we stick with the Roxbury Northfield project as approved, as written, and work with ValleyNet to move forward with it, provided that we get a um, extension on the deadline? Because that doesn't require any other paperwork. It doesn't, re it's not, um, not likely to be packaged as part of a um, you know, phase one deployment or anything like that. You know, I'm going to say, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't look at the map. Uh, Tim, is is your address in that in that bucket for the Roxbury? Yeah. I I don't know. Uh, what do you mean by that? Um, be, because we we had to pitch a specific set of addresses that we'd oh, be serving. Oh, the the I know what you mean. The the original small block of Roxbury. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not anywhere near that. That's that's the corner near Randolph, I believe. Yeah. And yeah. 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 Right. So, but 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 it brings it ever so slightly closer to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's funny because I'm right on the line almost of Granville, and they're part of um, the other fiber company there. Down twelve A. Doesn't. So I'm I'm not hearing anybody else screaming about this. So um, <laughs> I'm going to assume then Did that you? we should just roll forward. Do you have a format of, of looking for response? Do you want some sort of vote or thumbs I, I up? Don't know that, I, I, I don't, yeah, I mean, if you want to do thumbs up, I mean, if you have things to say, I mean, I'm I, I'm kind of thinking that this is not controversial. So I was hoping that you'd kind of just give a temperature sense. We're, we're already approved for the money, so. so how, how, much any, money, how much money was it? 90,000. And we can get as much as what two hundred fifty. And the other project was two, whatever the difference was between two fifty and ninety, so two sixty. So this is yeah, this is 90,000 90, for a specific set of addresses, and it, and we wouldn't be we wouldn't be changing that. It's it's the the project is what it is, and provided that ValleyNet's willing to move forward with it, I mean, I think we should continue with it. So is is there anybody, maybe I'll ask you this, is there anybody that's that objects to this? That thinks that we shouldn't? Okay, well that's that's easy then. All right, so let's um well we'll we'll move forward. I mean we'll obviously need to need to negotiate something a bit more formal with, with ValleyNet, but I mean that's you know we'll 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 tackle that when we get there. Um so the next question is should we try to bundle or or separate another project that's you know contiguous with or, or maybe not contiguous with you know a, a pilot project we keep it separate or put it together instead of more town or alongside um so well, well the, the the question would the, the question is in a in addition to our pilot project which already has a, a rough area do we want to tr do we want to try to run one big project that includes cares act funded locations or do we want to run our pilot project through with our previously you know un understood rough area from the feasibility study and then have a separate separate timeline separate project separate bucket of funds um with a project that could be contiguous, but could be somewhere else. So we, we, we could say, you know, we're gonna we're gonna start this project originating at Tom Fisher's house, and get get all of your neighbors and everything. I mean, there's 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 nothing that prevents us from from choosing a different location. I mean, you could build my house out here, um, right? That'd be that'd be exciting. Well, it needs to be um, for for the CARES Act funds. It needs to be for certain households, right? Right. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm just using that, that as an example. And, and there are um, there are addresses around me, including my own house, that would be that would be eligible. But uh, let's see, Chuck, then Michael. 
while our feasibility study routes may need some adjustment based on RDOC outcomes, there's already been a lot of work that's been put into those feasibility routes and, and the viability of them and, and why some are beneficial to others. Secondary to which route we go after first, I personally would be in favor of leveraging this money to build toward that first route because I just think it helps de-risk the project and helps us get there a little faster and easier. And, and you know, if we can if we can take the Vita money, which probably has fewer strings, and certainly people who know more, correct me if I'm wrong, but if we can take that aspect of the Vita money and reallocate it toward, you know, uh, kickstarting engineering of, of, you know, phase two route, um, because we have this money in hand as well to go towards whatever the phase one route is, I would be in favor of that. Okay, I've got... Michael, and then Jeremy. I think um, we owe the town of Moortown consideration. If, if we're going to alter the project and pick a new one, we should probably look in that town first because that was the plan. There were problems with it. There were problems with Wakefield Champlain Valley not liking the underground. There were problems with WEC not liking the underground. It wasn't going to cover all the uncertainties in Moortown. I, 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 we may end up with another one, but I think that's where we should start. Yeah. We may be able to rebuild what we had there with less effort than starting something fresh. Um, and without talking about Phase one, there may be some symbiosis there too. But all of this is going to be probably um, discussed in greater detail after January 29th. Right. Uh, Jeremy, then David, and then Tom. I mean, I guess my feeling kind of going back to what Jerry said was we've got a lot on our plates. So whatever we can do that takes advantage of this money with the least effort to us as possible, I think is kind of the way that we should go. But that said, you know, if there's some way that we can use this strategically to, you know, like if there are areas where the art off results are going to cause us big problems potentially, and we can use this money to kind of alleviate that, that might be worth looking into as well. Right, which, which, which certainly kind of dovetails, I think, Michael, with what, what you were saying. I mean, having more information after the 29th and such. Uh, David, then Tom. Yeah, the, uh, the other part about more time, I mean, we are talking about having fiber at the, um, oh, we have fiber already, I guess, at the Moortown WEC substation. So coming up from the other direction might be an alternative that we can look, we should look at in terms of this sort of reconfiguration. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, so I get, I'm, so I have Tom and then Chuck. So I'm, I guess I'm, I'm hearing kind of a general trend towards bundling trying to do one larger project. So w where exactly this happens, it sounds like we want to stay in more town. Um, and that makes sense, I think. But do we want to try to run these projects in parallel? Or do we want to try to run these projects together? I mean, so that the the stuff that has to be delivered by the end of next year would be the beginning part of the larger pilot project that's a, you know, a three year effort. Um, so that's, I just want to make sure I, I'm putting that back out there because I think that's a, a decision point that we've, mm -hmm. we've not really made. Uh, so I have a Tom, then Chuck. Yeah, I'll um, echo Alan's comment in the chat there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, um, you know, we are, what are we, I have lost count, two and a half years into this and we are 20 to 40 heads looking at each other on a computer so far, we are, we're spending money. So that's something that we didn't have a year or two ago, um, but we aren't actually doing anything with it. 
um, other than you know getting people to shuffle paper for us. So the sooner we can get to one or two wins where we are actually doing something for the community, I think that's the route we should go. The easiest way to get to that and get us the first couple steps so we can start then leaping, I th I'm in favor of going that route. So I guess in general, that would put me in the favor of looking to see what can we do to start going on phase one. We've already got a lot of work put into that. Um, and you know, if, if we can help some people along the way during a pandemic um, as kind of a, a nice um, place to start, then I think that's fantastic. Okay, and uh, Chuck, you're up next. I wanted to summarize what uh, Alan and Jerry had in the chat. Um, so Alan, um, I'm, I'm not just I'm not going to read it, but he's uh, not read it all. But he says we should have a sharp focus identifying one project that we want to see through. So if I'm hearing you right, Alan, you know, if we do Roxbury on the side, if that's not kind of if that's not going to slow us down with our, our initial phase one project, we should just just do the phase one project and not worry about going after the CARES Act fund and trying to kind of wedge it into part of our initial project? Does that sound about right? I'll see if I can get this connection to work. Can Can you hear me? Yep. You can indeed. Yeah, okay. What I worry about is I think we're being, we're being thrown around by the circumstances of what's been happening politically on both a state and a national level. I mean, we're, we're, we're like a bunch of Mexican junk, jumping beans at times, you know? We're, 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 we're trying to get this pot of money and that pot of money, and sometimes it looks like we're going to get it, then it looks like we'll maybe get it, then it looks like we could get it. If we can spend it all within three months, but that deadline might be extended, but yeah, if they extend it, there might be restrictions. I, 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 think, I think we're kind of getting caught up in a circular situation where, we have a lot of opportunities, but they're very limited in many ways. What I think we have to do is decide what's best for our getting to the goal that we have for our CUD and starting and focusing on a project that's the first step in getting there. If there's anything that comes up that looks as though it can be added on and, it, and it's a reasonable project that doesn't have a lot of restrictions and deadlines, I think then maybe we can handle more than one thing at once. But I, I, I think we're really starting to get stuck in doing nothing because we're trying to do so much. We're considering everything we might possibly do that possibly could bring a few more dollars to us. And I, I think that's a bad situation to be in. Hmm. So let me I'm going to try to try to say what, what you said again in a slightly different way the so we should focus on the phase one project and not worry about the kind of time committed funds that come with the CARES Act money we should just say let's do phase one right let's build that over the next three years and if we have some some not terribly encumbered source of funding we should go after that too yes I think what we have to do is make sure that whenever we jump for something that's not directly the phase one that we've identified, we ought to go through a process of making sure we can justify spending our attention and time on a project that's possibly tangentially related to what we're really trying to do, but we don't want to go after it just because there's money there and it might work. It has to somehow fit into the plan that we've got to build out in a certain area that will then start per, start giving us the revenue we, we, we desperately need to really get serious about the build out throughout the rest of the communities in our CUD. I mean, we're, we're, we're really stuck in not having any of our own revenue that we're producing at this time. It makes us dependent on other people. We have a tin cup and we're going from one place to another rather than trying to figure out how we can start making money ourselves that we can then use to grow the business. Thanks, Alan. And can I follow up with that, Jeremy? Just just one, you know, we're, we have the Vita loan that we're looking at and we're not ready for that. We're, we're not, we're not yes, we prepared. Are to do that and that's the surest thing that's the that's the big thing that we need 
and we're not ready for that. So we really need to focus on getting in position for that. I'll quit. Okay. So um, if we want to talk in any more detail, we should probably go into executive session. Uh, do folks think that we need to, to do that? Not today. I don't think so. I want to. I I like to make a motion that for the twenty, whatever the non Roxbury project is, we reapply and say we're going to build the. We're going to work this money into our phase one project. Period. And if they don't accept it, they don't accept it. Um, and I, I just think we need to tie the two together and and move forward. Okay. So David has a motion. Is there a second of David's motion? I'll second it. Okay, seconded by Alan. So th that that seems somewhat in um, in opposition to, to to what Jerry was saying and to what Alan was saying. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I seconded oh. it. Get it out there for discussion. All right. Thanks. Fair enough. Okay. So I, it's it. I think we have one of those nice motions where we've um, we've had the discussion before the motion. So I'm not sure that is there anything else that folks um, you know that you want to you want to add to this. Do do we want to take on the the obligation to serve to serve folks using the CARES Act funds along with our pilot project? I, I mean, Chuck, you were, you were up next, Chuck and Michael. Yeah, uh, a few comments here. Um, the first comment sort of relates to the the Moortown line of thinking, which you know we can table a longer discussion on that. But I, I do just want to point out that WEC seems to be really coming around to the idea of of you know working on broadband and doing what they can to to make that work. So um, because that that substation is right on the other end of that Moortown project's build. We have the opportunity to build from either direction, either leveraging Waitsfield Telecom or leveraging WEC to, to still hit the same addresses. I know that doesn't change the complexity of the actual engineering and physical build, given we have a lot of underground, unfortunately, but that that you know that might be helpful and that we have multiple parties we can we can engage on that topic. Um, but on the broader topic, I, I, I agree that whatever CARES Act money we go after should be synergistic toward whatever we prioritize as phase one. I think that's a simpler way to say what I, I said earlier. It is money, it, I think it's a, a, a substantial enough amount of money to go after, and you know that would help unlock future opportunities for us without a ton of additional effort, as long as we are putting it toward an area that we know we wanna prioritize right off the bat anyway. Okay, so so the, we have a Michael up next, but uh, again, D David's motion was to essentially just just request this funding to supplement phase one. Um, my instinct is that we have, well, I think we'll have to be a bit more specific than that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. But okay, go ahead, Michael. I, I think I support the motion. Um, I understand Alan's concern. I think that we did chase shiny objects and CARES Act money at the end of the year, and it, there wasn't enough time to achieve it. And, it. and we ended up like a puppy chasing his tail instead of getting somewhere. And that's frustrating, and we don't want that frustration to carry forward, and I think that's what Alan's expressing. Maybe that's only a part of what he's expressing. but. It's still significant money. It still can be close to and tied to the phase one project, but not specifically part of it, therefore completable faster. And I, I think that's the way we should go. So I'm gonna vote in favor of the motion. Okay, thanks, Michael. Any, anybody else have any thoughts about David's motion? Jerry? Yeah, just, just one more thing. Uh, and, you know, I apologize for being Debbie Downer. <laughs> but 
I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this from a resource perspective and somewhat of a management perspective. It's not a question of whether or not it's a, a nice amount of money. It's not a question of whether or not these folks could or should be served. It's a question of whether or not CB, CB Fiber has the resources to get this stuff done and ourselves, this small group of people on this one screen, get this done in time and also be able to get our phase one implemented. It, it, we don't have enough resources. There aren't enough people working on this. And we're, 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 you know, we're, we need to, the next item on the agenda is, is a project manager. So you know, we, I don't think we're in position to take advantage of these opportunities that are out there. So, 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 Jerry, am I interpreting that that you would you would not vote in favor of of David's motion? Then, I I I would like to focus on phase one and let this CARES Act money pass us by. At this point in time. Okay. Jeremy. Just and a Ray. thought. I don't know. Did you? Would it be possible to use some of this money? instead of for connectivity, but to do something else that we need, like hire a project manager? No. No, okay, just a thought. No, that, it, it, ha it has to provide service to the to the addresses by the end of the year. So, okay. I mean, it, it could be part of a bigger project, but it's it the ultimately needs that the rubber needs to hit the road and people need that service by the end of the year, right? So uh, aren't we really asking um, for the business development committee to prepare the appropriate application um, in, a, in line with David's uh, thoughts. That is that it's supplementary to the phase one project and for us to see this before it's submitted. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's ultimately we would task it to business development to go and do the, do the legwork. We, we, we don't wanna do this with the whole governing board. Right, so it's really the sense of the board then that um, uh, we think this is a pretty good idea, uh, but we want to see the details worked out and come back to the board, and then then the board approves it being uh, being forwarded as a I process. Would, I would, I would, yeah, if if this motion passes, then yeah, I, I would expect that to be the the logical sequence. Any anybody have any um, additional thoughts about this? So I mean, so I, I have to say, hear, hearing Jerry put it that way, I'm I'm actually starting to lean towards not going after the additional CARES Act funds aside from Roxbury, um, and just kind of keeping it simple. So the, the 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 money is important, but and I guess if if we, we if we're hiring people, then it's going to be them that gets the job done. But yeah, I don't I don't know, Tom. To, to Ray's point um, and, and Jerry's, so the question is then, you know, do we have the resources available to to do both of these things at the same time? And so asking those folks on this call um, who would, you know, be tasked or would be, you know, heavily involved with deciding who would be doing that work, what are your opinions? Are, are you asking, are you asking Ray and Jerry? Yeah, or the Business Development Committee in general or any folks who can help out. I, I'm volunteering as well, well but. Yeah. My feeling is that, you know, that we, we're going to have to be doing this work for the phase one project anyway. That's why I made the motion the way I did. I, I think it's just one in part. I mean, the public service department may reject the whole idea, um, but from my standpoint, I'd rather not, you know, I'd rather have it be consistent with what we're trying to accomplish this year. And to me, getting $250,000 to make that happen would be great. Um, so, in any event, all that, you know, implementing phase one this year is work, period. Um, and there's a core group working on that. We'll have a project manager, hopefully. Um, and we'll have some other money to work with, too. So, I'm, you know, that's why I'm sort of proponing, you know, proposing doing it, just so we get, get something done in, the, in our real plans. So the, the lift of the application work itself is not that much burdensome compared to the rest of project one that has to happen anyways. That's what I'm hearing. Correct. The, the, the application is probably the easier part than the, you know, getting the contractors and getting the agreements with the parties we need to do all this work. 
that's going to need to work. Very much so. Okay, so we, we have a motion. Ultimately, I think you know the the sequence is going to be then. Then this gets kind of handed back to David. Business development is going to flesh this out, and we'll see what this looks like. Approve it in early January, and send this to to DPS. Yeah. Any anybody else that feels like they have something to add? Okay. RD? Briefly. Um, is Jeremy, <clears throat> is this a go, no go moment? Or are we going to, does this just take us, does this motion, if it passes, just take us to January? Or are we stepping off the cliff tonight if we, um, uh, if we vote to, uh, in favor of this motion? No, I, I guess I wouldn't say it's a stepping off the cliff. I mean, it's a it's an indication about whether we want to pursue the additional CARES Act funds for um, to supplement our phase one um, our phase one project. So a couple things could happen there. Um, you know, business development. Write, writes a, uh, a proposal or writes a, a contract, uh, or a, sorry, a grant application, and it comes back to the board, and the board here says that this is crazy, and everybody's changed their mind, or it, it's bad, and we say no. And at that point, then it doesn't go. Uh, the other alternative is it gets submitted, and, and DPS says, nope, and then we don't have it anyways. So um, on the other hand, it is a no-go moment. So if we say no to this, then we're I, we're essentially saying that we're not going to pursue the CARES Act, the supplementary CARES Act funds for part of Phase One, and then we can get on with doing yeah. Phase One. Does that answer your questions? Great. Thank you. Okay. Sure. Henry. Um, yeah, I have. I have. Uh... A, a thought, uh, something I wanted to mention, which is that I think that it's essential to do a diff on the eligible locations and the and the FCC uh, ARDOF locations and see what's left. And and I I really wonder how that will impact the planning for Phase One. And you know, it seems to me that. Um, in, uh, it, the other factor that may factor in here is that um, the CARES funding can't go to RDOF, then that, how does that affect, um, you know, our build out versus um, if we can go in RDOF areas for our build out, which doesn't have the same limitations. So these are both things that really hinge on understanding how the RDOF is going to impact our our phase one activities. Uh, I'm sure David could put a map together for us and that that would be really useful. Um, I also wonder how these people have five years to to build out these RDOF things. And, you know, the, there was a, also this question about whether if we got in there before the people that were assigned an area via RDOF, we'd have an opportunity where once they've built into that area, we wouldn't. So I'm, I'm kind of curious about that as well. Um, so, I mean, they have, do they have dibs on it for five years and we can't touch it or you know i mean you know what's um, that's i think all part of our strategy and and what we want to do in phase one and how we want to build out well right and, and I, I think that's going back to to michael's point about that we're not going to you know un, until the information about how the how the rdof blocks are divvied up we're not going to have a, a a sense of that just yet um, but yeah, but I think 
we're going to have to take our, our phase one kind of rough sketch. I mean, we, we got that we got that last what May, yeah. Um, and so a fair bit of new information, including all the stuff in the the Coos, um database and the survey, whatever that's come to light, that's going to change things. I think. So yeah, well, I think we'll have to do that, but that's um, hopefully going to be part of the the application. Right. Um, that's that's what I'm saying is it's a prerequisite for resubmitting an application, which is is going to be a different scope than just Roxbury is what my latest understanding is. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so, so the Roxbury project is, is is already approved. So that and that can that can go forward. That can happen in parallel, and that's not going to require um, that much effort from the part of this board. It's the the, the, the bigger phase one project and how that these additional funds could work there. And I should point out that just because some entity won a, an RDOF block doesn't mean that if we, if, if we, if we get there first and we are building fiber there, I mean, the, the, there's nothing that's nothing prohibiting us from building there. Right. So we could beat folks to the punch. And then if they want to offer service and they want, you know, to contract with us to do that. Wonderful. Um, you can do that. So I have uh, Jeremy and then Michael. Um, I don't know. I, I think that it's enough money that we should at least continue to pursue it. Um, I would also be willing to be one of the folks helping to prepare the revised um, application. So at least from a manpower standpoint, count me in. Got, got that, David? Yep. Fresh meat. <laughs> Sign me up. Great. All right, Michael. Um, so it's a quarter million dollars. Nobody's driving us to do something we don't want to do. If there was a quarter million dollars telling us we need to serve Timbuktu with fixed wireless when we want to serve more time with fiber, then we shouldn't take the money. But this is money being offered to us to do something we're chartered to do. We're supposed to bring broadband to people. And we're supposed to emphasize fiber and use fixed wireless where we need to. I think we should take advantage of this free money that's not a loan and augment what else we are already doing. We shouldn't chase the shiny object if it's leading us away from our mission, but this is our mission. And so I don't see a reason to turn away from it unless it ends up having too many strings. It did last time around because the time was too short. It doesn't now. And so there's that. Um, about RDOF, two things. One, Jeremy, um, it has been divided up. It is public now. We can openly talk about who won what. We're not allowed to talk about strategies yet. We're not allowed to talk about post-auction market structure. That's a phrase that FCC wrote. But um, who won where is, is now allowed to be discussed even within the consortium. And the business development committee is already well aware of all that. All the members of the business development committee that attended the last meeting. Um, and in terms of um, building and overbuilding, RDOF implies an obligation. So the winners must serve those locations, whether other entities come first and build or not. And so if other entities come in first, there will be overbuilding and there will be dilution of both entities market. And so that always has to be taken into account. But that's the kind of stuff in detail we can talk about at the end of January. All right. Okay, Jeremy, I'm gonna give you the, the last word here in the interest of time. I wanna get this thing rolling. Never mind. I was dropped. Okay, so um, I'm going to do this because I'm I'm not 100% convinced that this is uh, unanimous. We'll just do a quick roll call if we could. Um, and so for, for David's motion, 
to go after the CARES Act funding and essentially have it, have it supplement the phase one project. Uh, we'll start with Ray, uh, I or nay. So uh, real quick, Jeremy, can you also record this? I'll try to get it, but um, my connection has been dropping me intermittently, so. Yep, I, 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 have, a sheet, I have a sheet of paper in front of me, so I'm, I'm recording these. Okay. Okay, Ray? Uh, yes. Okay. Chuck? Hi. Michael? Hi. Alan? No. RD? Aye. Tim? Sullivan? Okay, we'll come, we'll come back to you, Tim. David? Aye. Tom? Aye. Henry? Aye. Uh, I see you now, Tim. I was uh, indisposed in the bathroom, so I missed what we're talking about here. Uh, this is, this is, uh, did you hear David's original motion? Yes, from like five, five to 10 minutes ago talk, yes. Y yes. Uh, I'm okay with uh, agreeing with David's motion. Okay, so I'll take that as a yes. Um, all right, and I will, um, I will abstain. I'm still, I'm still torn. So the eyes have it. Um, all right. So business development, you, you have some, some marching orders anyways, and then we can, um, we'll figure out Roxbury with ValleyNet and we'll have some contracts and things to do shortly. Um, moving on so, to uh, the only one that I missed was Michael. Is he in, was, were you and I, Michael? Who said I? Okay. Thank you. Sorry. No problem. Right. Um, project manager 2021. So I want to recognize uh, Tim Shea, our current project manager. This is his last meeting with us. I want to uh, thank Tim very much for the work that he's done. R r round of applause and such. Very, very much appreciated uh, all of the work that you did and getting us, uh, keeping us rolling through all this. That said, we have to say goodbye to Tim. And I was hoping to have, um, I had exchanged an email with, with Siobhan about the process of um, seeking out a new program manager, but I think, or project manager, but um, is there anything else business development folks want to add about the search for the project manager? Uh, otherwise, I think I'll probably just continue that talk with Siobhan and we'll go from there. Okay. You could okay. pass on the name that I emailed you from, from Aries. I passed uh, it on to Siobhan Mary, and Ray. You did? Thank you. Yeah, I, yeah, I, 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 saw, I saw the resume. Oh, go ahead, Ray. Yeah, I said Siobhan and I are working on it, and I'm and I'm holding the pen. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Well, so let's uh, let's move on and do a uh, we'll, we'll do our roundtable. Uh, we'll do this from I'll do this from the bottom of my screen. Uh, Jerry. Nothing for me. Thanks. Uh, Jeremy? Uh, nothing, thanks. Okay. Uh, John Russell? If you want, if you want to unmute. Yeah, I do. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. I think, uh, you know, I'm just an observer tonight, and I, I really feel like we're, the board is bogged down and isn't moving forward. It, it may think it's moving forward, but this whole discussion for the last 45 minutes has been about one subject that David tried to bring to, uh, um, to a conclusion, but we still had the same discussion. And so, yeah, you had, you, you had your vote and you've agreed to do these things, but there isn't any way to do it. There isn't, you know, you don't have a method to do it. And so that's, I think that's what's missing in most of these discussions of the last few weeks. We're really bogged down by, by people offering us money and bogged down because we can't be in the same place. That's my, that's my thing. I'll, I'll hang up now. Okay. Thanks, John. Henry. 
Uh, yeah, just one quick question is, has, has uh, Fred completed the updated feasibility study with Duxbury in Washington? And is yes, that he, available for um, us to see it? Uh, sure, yes, he, ha he has completed it and I will send it out. Let me see if I can find that that email. I will send it out to everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Tom. Um, there's a quick question on the, the stimulus package that may or may not get signed. Um, it looks like reading the, the, the link that was put up at the very top there, the, the, the number is now around 300 million. Is that for the entire nation to be broken out? Does anybody know how that works out as far as, and then uh, assuming some amount of that comes to Vermont, um, I believe there was a, a comment from Rob Fish earlier, of, you know, we should start getting our heads together about how we want to, or what we want to say to legislature and so forth around ways that Vermont might spend that money. Um, I don't know how fast of a timeline that's on, but the 300 million is for Vermont. Wow, that's massive. Okay, um, this seems like 300 million for Vermont. Wouldn't that cover every yeah. single town in the? <laughs> 300 million for the whole United States. Okay, yeah, that, makes, I... that, that sounds more realistic. So, I mean, we might get a couple million. <laughs> okay. Um, nevertheless, I was just wondering, is it something that we should start putting any time or devotion or thought into going in front of, yeah. you know? Shovel whoever. ready is important. Um, I I've was passing back and forth with my wife that works at Vermont Legal Aid uh, that, you know, various headlines. Um, her, her thought being that she works for the uh, healthcare uh, advocates office that um, the money particularly devoted towards um, health teleconnect stuff. Um, mm -hmm. the, the idea that a company might get a giant check from the federal government and then build something out, but then charge their customers the same rates they charge nationwide um, had a real catch in her throat as well as her superiors. So um, I think they're gonna be speaking to the state legislature about that. So I was just thinking, you know, what other similar thoughts might we want to have on um, what we want to say about that? That was all. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Uh, Sam, anything that you want to add? Oh, okay. David? I just want to wish everybody a happy holiday. I know it's going to be tough to not to see a lot of people you usually see. And it's been great working with you guys this year. Let's hope next year is so much better in many ways. <laughs> here, here. Thanks, thanks, David. Tim Sullivan. You tell mute, I guess, huh? Um, I just uh, I haven't been able to attend the last few meetings just because I'm either traveling to Vermont on that night or traveling to Rhode Island on that night. So. I've been trying to catch up and uh, I just keep abreast of all the emails that come through. Um, I try and give our town an update every time I know something, but I think we're due for another blurb for uh, the towns or the front porch farm type of things to uh, give an update, um, you know, very short update as to uh, where we stand in a concerted effort. Okay, that's a good idea, Tim. I th I see Chuck nodding. So uh, I think, and, and we're we're also doing the the, the canvassing there. I, I don't know how much of that is done in Roxbury, but uh, I mean that's part of a the, the broader picture there as well. Uh, R D. Uh, <clears throat> thank you. I'm I'm just coming up to speed. Thank you, Jeremy, for sending me the feasibility study. I haven't studied it in great detail yet. Um, so I'm still getting my legs under me. You did mention at the last meeting that Evan Carlson was going to be offering or organizing some kind of with you. I'm eager to participate in our and um, they, hopefully that will flatten my learning curve somewhat. Um, I learned recently that uh, consolidated owns fiber optic that serves Cabot and uh, Cabot Village uh, and uh, I presume also the AT&T um, uh, wireless tower 
uh, on the hill across from mine in Cabot. Uh, I don't know what else it serves. <clears throat> and I'm not clear as to what the significance of that is for Cabot, for my town. Um, uh, as I glance at the ability study, I see, I think we're on the salmon uh, at the feasibility study route. Um, and uh, so, I'm not so entirely sure. Can I, um, can I stop uh, you for a second, RD? What that means, what our, what our relation. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So, so talking talking about portions of the route and the color codes and where things are is yes. not is not is not public. Thank you. I uh, was not aware of that. Um, uh, I, I I I would be eager to have a private conversation uh, about the significance of uh, the feasibility study for my town. Um, and. Uh, that oversight. Uh, in last of all, I apologize, Paul. Um, I would be grateful if um, if you could bunch all of the agenda items on which you expect action at the uh, beginning of the meeting. Um, sometimes uh, uh, these meetings run on rather late, and um, and I would appreciate at least the opportunity um, to bail at some point when my presence is not required uh, to maintain a quorum. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's see, Michael. Thank you, Tim, Shay. Appreciate your work. Do you miss us yet? Um, not yet. <laughs> consolidated has fiber all over the place already, and most of it currently um, serves remote terminals for DSL, and some of it is reserved for big clients like AT&T cell towers. But that's about to change. We all should be very aware of Consolidated's plans are. They just got an infusion of hundreds of millions of dollars. They sold a lot of their shares to a big equity company. They intend to do a very major fiber build all over New, New England and their 23 states. Um, so they're going to be a very big player and things are going to change. We'll all have to be aware of it. All right. Thanks for that, Michael. And if, if you haven't seen the, uh, the, Ardoff, uh, the Ardoff map yet, I mean, that shows where Consolidated did win, you know, did win some some blocks there and some blocks in cv fiber territory that we should definitely be aware of all right uh chuck thank you tim thank you everyone else for all of your hard work happy holidays everyone thanks chuck tim shea last words yeah, of the I year want, yep uh i just wanted to say thank you and certainly wish everyone well and i i do think uh, you guys are on the cusp of, of really you know, doing some, uh, making some significant progress. And I think the RFPs will be uh, help define your future and, and certainly the money will be uh, close at hand following that. So uh, where it does seem like you've been uh, spinning for a while, I think uh, you're you're well on the way and uh, have set yourselves up for success and uh, wish you well and, and uh, look forward to, actually I'm in uh, the RDOF block where consolidated one. So we'll see, uh, hopefully I don't have to wait six years, but, uh, uh, hopefully I'll be joining the uh, high-speed broadband uh, infrastructure soon myself. But thank you all, and happy holidays. Thanks, Tim. Ray? Yeah, so uh, Q1, I think, is our quarter. I think next year is going to be, um, uh, the first quarter is going to be, uh, uh, we're going to get a lot of traction uh, for what we're doing. Tim, thank, thank you. appreciate all your help. Um, uh, I'm sure that um, we, we did move the chains while you were here. Uh, thanks for some of your adult supervision. I'm sure that as a PM, you thought your job was part referee and marriage counselor. Uh, we needed that. Um, so thanks an awful lot. Uh, happy holidays to everyone. We'll see you on the other side of, uh, I guess, 31 December. Thanks, Ray. And uh, yeah, and thanks to all of you for putting in the work and showing up for these meetings. You know, at the beginning of last year, we were still meeting at the elementary school and 
seeing each other and periodically eating pizza and such. But uh, I think we made a pretty decent transition and hopefully, um, yeah, I, I think I think Ray's right. Quarter one is going to be the uh, is going to be the big the big spark. And uh, so yeah, have a wonderful holiday, everybody, and see you in January. Happy holidays, everyone. Yep. So, and I. I, I yeah.